Jane Evans, your lasting life change parent coach, here with the three essentials for raising an emotionally intelligent child. Now, why would you want to raise an emotionally intelligent child? The good news is when we do, they are much more able to maintain good physical and mental health, to have really meaningful relationships, either at work or intimate relationships, and in all areas of life, they do better. So why would you not want to raise an emotionally healthy child, emotionally intelligent child? So number one thing that we need to be doing as parents to enable this is to be very aware ourselves, whether we are able to be with our children's emotions. So that can look like when our child starts to cry or gets very cross or maybe uses that kind of high-pitched whiny voice or says, no, 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 I can't do that. This is going to go wrong and gets in a real panic that we are able to take a breath, recognize what that's doing to us so that we can be really present with them and be saying things like, it's okay, this, this looks really tough for you. And be more in that place of pausing and actually noticing and holding the feelings rather than maybe saying, but you'll be fine. So dismissing them or, oh, I know that's hard, but let's go and do this, distracting them or even telling them off. And that can happen if these were feelings that we got into trouble for or got dismissed or denied when we were children. So holding the space, being present with our children's emotions gives a powerful message of your feelings matter. Your feelings matter. They're not good or bad. They're just feelings and they matter and I'm here for you. So that's number one, very, very important, but not always easy to do. So number two is to be able ourselves to respond with safe energy. So that means that if we have got triggered in some way and it's and it's just frustrating us and we, we can't stand that sound or we just want them not to be sad, that actually we notice we check our, our energy, so that means what the hell is going on inside of us emotionally because that creates energy that radiates out of our body and our brain towards our child, which is the thing they mostly connect with, and that we balance it out and that we also take good intention into being with our child. So if we go into it with the intention of, oh, I just need this to stop now, or I need them to, um, yeah, just suck it up in this moment, I just don't have time, then that is not a good healthy intention. And the children pick up on that at a subconscious energy to energy level super fast. It's super, super fast, way before any words that come out of our mouth. So we need to be able to hold them. And to be able to hold them, we need to have that good, safe energy. So safe energy is balanced, calm, I'm in a place of compassion and I come with good intention. Anything else will not feel safe. And again, that gives the child the experience of it's not safe to feel sad, it's not safe to be cross. Um, so they will learn ways to hide that or when it happens again, it will happen even at a, at, at a higher level because they're not learning any way of being held and regulated through it. And then the third thing is to really trust in this process that you can 100% rely on using compassion, respect, and loving guidance when you're raising your emotionally intelligent child. Because when we do that, when we can respond with compassion, when we speak to our children in a respectful way, even a baby, it's really important. Um, a toddler, you know, and definitely up into teenage years and beyond, that we speak to them in a way that, yeah, we would like to be speak, spoken to, or a way that we would speak to our friends. So, you know, if our friend forgot their bag, would we say, oh, for goodness sake, Go and get your bag. How many times have I told you you're always... We would say, oh, you forgot your bag. Would you like me to get it for you? 
so it's it's carrying that level of respect and compassion this looks really hard for you right now would you just do you just want me to just sit with you that that's what it looks like and sounds like and that we our job is to teach and guide our children massively but we do it in this emotionally intelligent way ourselves so we've worked out that it's yeah it's not okay for any of us to push anyone it it just isn't we work that out so how can i is there anything i can do to help so that you know this doesn't happen again because you got really upset your sister got hurt and was really upset as well what can i do so we often really go to town on the you shouldn't have done that you know it's not okay look at the state of your sister now but there's no guidance in there there's just a lot of criticism criticism and pointing out the obvious so when we've all calmed down, if we can be in that place of, I really want to guide and teach my child, I don't want to criticise and shame them, then we're in this loving, loving guidance space where they can really hear what we're saying and begin to learn. Because after all, that's what they're doing every day. They're learning, learning, learning from us. So I hope that those three insights are really useful to you. So being able to hold your child through their emotional state, being able to check in with your energy and your intention that you're taking into whatever it is you're doing with your child and balance it out. And really trusting in the power of using compassion, respect and loving guidance to, to raise these rounded children who are really in tune with their own feelings, can, as they get older, recognise, regulate and show up in the world in a way that really serves them and, of course, everyone else.